Hi, I'm Julie David, and I want to talk to you today about one of my absolute passions, and that is home hostess coaching. I know some of you already know the power of coaching your hostess, but I wanted to talk today to those of you that this might be something new that you want to try. First of all, I want to tell you why I think you should invest your time in home hostess coaching your hostesses. When I started to do this about three and a half years ago, I saw a dramatic change in my business. I sponsored more, my retail went up dramatically, and I felt more confident and was just having more fun. This is one of my absolute favorite parts of the business because it's my chance to really get to know these women and make friends. And so it always makes me feel so much better. I know it is an inconvenience of time and it's difficult, but I want to give you a couple of tips um, on how I try to make it fit into my life. I'm just as busy as all of you, but I try to make this a priority and come up with some creative ways to make it happen. I don't always coach them in their home. Sometimes I coach them because they work, and I can only do this um, in the morning and up until 3 o'clock. I do this at their work. So it's a great opportunity sometimes to meet some of their coworkers because I just bop in and coach them right there at work. Um, I meet them at Panera or on their lunch break. I've coached people at Chick-fil-A and at Subway and McDonald's. I mean, anywhere that's got a table. I'll even stand. I've done it in a parking lot. I try to go to them. Even if it's a 35 or 40 minute drive, I try to coach a couple people at the same time. I might try to coach somebody on the way to another show. I'm just creative. Now, if somebody lives really far away from you, you might ask, hey, do you ever go shopping at such and such a place? So, you know, you know your local malls and kind of busy, busier towns, and maybe that's halfway. And if she's going to go shopping, you could meet her and go shopping yourself and meet her at a Starbucks and just coach her right there. So I try to be creative. Now, if this is just not an option for you, but you really would like to see your shows get better and you want to coach your hostesses better, here's another creative thing. You could use modern technology and you could FaceTime or Skype. I think seeing her face is so critical, seeing her reaction to what you're saying and her seeing yours, making that personal connection. You could schedule a time and just Skype. Um, another thing is if you're going to just go ahead and do it on the phone, my tip for you is to schedule a time. So, for instance, you're going to say to her, all right, so we can't get together in person, so we're going to need to coach on the phone. I just want to make sure you're going to have a great show. I need about 20 minutes. Um, when would be a good time? After the kids go down, would that work? Do you want me to call you at 9? Is that okay? Are you sure? Okay. Well, so from 9 to 9.20, we'll talk or from 7 to 7.20, or from 4 to 4.20, whatever your time is. Here's what happens to me. I get really uncomfortable when I call somebody on the phone and I feel like I'm bothering them. And I just fly through all the stuff that I want to talk to them about. I know you've done this too. Um, and, you know, I feel uncomfortable and so I don't really, I just, uh, you know, throw, throw the information out there and just keep going. Well, that's not going to help you. They can't take it in. They're not asking, answering questions, asking questions. And so I need to take a breath. I need to know that they know I need 20 minutes. And I need to just walk through, as if they were there in person, all the things that I want to talk about. It really calms me down. Halfway through, I'll even say, are you good with time? Because I, I still have a few more things I want to talk to you about. But are you doing all right? And just go ahead and ask her. Because you want to make sure you have the time to go over everything so that she has a great show. You know, she's your partner. And I straight out tell them that. I say, you know what? You are my partner in this. And if, you know, I, if you, at your show, I will make them fall in love with the jewelry. I will teach them how this is going to really impact them and they're going to love it. And how they can turn an ordinary outfit into something extraordinary. But honey, you're the only one that can get the people there. Oh, I understand. Yeah, you're my partner. So you got to get the, the information out beforehand and really motivate them and <clears throat> help them to know why they need to come and then I'll do my job once they're here. So I really want her to understand that. We're going to go over that when I show you how to coach. Okay, so I hope you understand why you want to do this. Now what do you do? Okay, so when I book a show, right away, um, in the beginning when I started to home host this coach, what I used to say was, um, so I'd really like 
to um, just take a couple minutes and help you have a really great show, if that's okay with you. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to come over to your house and um, just just take a few minutes and if that's good. I mean, I don't. I mean, if you have time. And inevitably, what she's going to say to me is, "Oh my gosh, honey, no, 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 don't worry about it. I got this. I don't want you to have to go out of your way." She thinks she's helping me by saying, "No, you don't need to come." And I feel like I'm invading on her time by saying, can I come? And we both need to change the way we're thinking. I need to realize that if I don't come, she is not going to have as good a show as if I do. I have to be confident and know that she does not know what she needs to know. And I've got stuff in here that I've got to help her to understand. And I need to meet with her. I'm doing her a favor by meeting with her. And she is not doing me a favor by not having me come. So I changed the way that I speak to her. And I say this. Okay, great. Your show is um, March 15th. So I usually will give you a call about five weeks before that. So we're looking at sort of the beginning of February. And I will check with you for a good time that I will come on out to your house. Do you work during the day? Are you available? Is there any day of the week that you have some availability during the day that I can meet with you? Oh, great. You have Fridays off? Great. I can come and see you on Friday. She might say, no, I work all day. I say, well, <clears throat> could I come on your lunch break? I can? Great. Um, so how about I'll call you. And we'll find a good time that works for you and works for me the beginning of February. And then I will come out. I just need about 20, 25 minutes of your time. I'm going to bring you some books. And we're just going to go over how to have a really great show. Great. Okay, that's it. I tell her what I'm going to do. I already established it. Okay. So then about five weeks before, I give her a call. I reconnect. You know, do I have my guest list? Blah, blah, blah. Go over all that. Set up a time for me to come and visit her. It's awesome. It's easy. Okay. Now, when I go and visit her, um, I have what I call my checkout notebook, so it's just a real pretty little notebook. And inside my checkout notebook, I have everything that I need because I'm very, I'm going to look organized, but I'm very disorganized. So I'm organized in my chaos, if that makes any sense. So for me, this works. Rather than making packets, um, I just keep this stocked, and that way I know I have everything that I need. So in my folder, I have papers for each hostess and has all of her information on it. And then inside it will be her, um, oh, I just snagged my sweater, will be her address list. And then afterwards will be her order forms. Okay, so that'll all go in there. And then I also have um, a thank you card if I haven't sent it yet. My little thank you card goes in there and that way I know I haven't sent my thank you card yet. So I'm very organized that way. Okay, then I have my little folders. And in each of my folders are the things that I need, okay? So I have a folder for my hostess information, one for my closing out, um, your, you know, I get paid to sparkle sheet that I use at the end of the show. Then I have my, here's what I've got. This is what I'm going to give my hostess, hostesses. I've got my 40 guests in four minutes, and I give this to her when she books the show. Very important, okay? This is for sure got to go to her the moment she books the show. And then we're going to talk about this, my tic-tac-toe board. Okay, that's another folder. And each little pocket of the folder is labeled so that if it becomes empty, I know what goes in it because I'm not very organized and I will forget. Then I have my pre-sale order form and I like to give them these pre-sale order forms which is just four order forms on a sheet so that I don't have to be handing out lots of my um, order forms that I pay for. And then I have my hostess wish list that is set up in ensemble form so that she can kind of get an idea of what she might like. And then in the back, I have the things that I use in my show, which is my guest survey and my love it list and my watch or listen to win paper. So I have all that in here. So when I go to home hostess coach somebody, I just grab my folder and I make sure that I have some catalogs. If I'm feeling really organized that day, I will bring along our fun handy dandy envelopes from Premier and then I'll stick this stuff as I'm talking to her in this and give it to her and it's got it's a great organized way for her to keep all of her stuff together. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to pretend that I am coaching you, okay? So, I arrive, knock knock. Hi Cindy, how are you? 
Okay, I am so excited. Hey, listen, before we sit down, let's just talk really fast about where we're going to put the jewelry. So I see you have a really nice dining room table. It sits about six people. That's perfect for all of my jewelry. You know, I need a big space. So I'll just throw the jewelry down here. I'm gonna arrive about 45 minutes early so I can set it all up. And we'll just take these dining room chairs and how about we, um, how about we do it in the family room? Would that work for you? Oh, you wanna do it in the basement? Hmm, well, that's okay, that's not a problem, but I'm thinking the flow might be really nice right here. Since the jewelry's here, we could move back and forth, and um, I think your office over there would be great. Can I check people out in the office? Awesome! Okay, so we'll take these dining room chairs and we'll just put them in a sort of a semi-circle over there, and I'll stand in front of the fireplace, and do you happen to have like a, a TV tray that I could kind of just put my jewelry tray on? You do? Fabulous, that would be awesome. And then um, we'll just put them all in a circle there and we'll keep your snacks in the kitchen. Now, a word about the snacks. Um, do you have any idea of what you're going to make? You don't have a clue? Okay, well, listen, I think it's really important that you keep it simple. Really, really simple. And one of the things that I would really appreciate is if we did snacks at the end. Because here's what I like to see happen. I want everybody to arrive on time. And I'm going to encourage that by doing an on-time drawing. So our show starts at 7. I'll get here about 6.15 to set up, like I said. Your guests will start arriving about 5 minutes to 7. And the reason they will is because in their invite, I'm going to put a ticket. And I'm going to put on their invite that at 7.10, we're going to have an on-time drawing. So they better be here. And people arrive like you would not believe. I mean, it's insane. It's awesome. Okay, so they're going to start arriving about 5 to 7. We'll issue them in here to the jewelry. And we'll get them all to put something fun on look cute, get in the mood, okay? And then from there, we'll sit them down and I'll tell them nobody gets to win unless their butt's in a seat, okay? And at 710, right on the dot, I'm gonna do the drawing. So whoever's here, because it's, you know, it's more fair to the people that actually arrive if we do it on time. So we'll do a drawing, I'll give somebody a clip it. So that'll be fun, don't you think that'll be fun? Yeah, so you gotta really, you gotta really work that. You gotta really sell that. You gotta really encourage them, make sure they know the on-time drawing, make sure that they have their ticket. Now I will give them tickets. Um, if they forget their tickets. So don't worry about that. But encourage them. And, and it's so funny because they'll, they'll arrive with their whole envelope. Their invite, their ticket, the envelope, the whole deal. So we'll get them to come in. And then 710, we'll sit them all down. And then I'll give them some diva dollars for putting jewelry on. Remember all that? Yeah. And now I'm going to need you to be my partner. Okay? So I'm going to need you to hand the diva dollars out during the show when they say love it. Are you good with that? Yeah, it was so fun at the other show. Now, um, so that's why you need to keep your snacks super simple, okay? Because if you have to leave in the middle of the show to go pull your little baby quiches out of the stove, then Grandma and Sally are going to follow you into the kitchen because they're going to want to know what you're doing. And really, they're here to see you, so we want them to have a good time. So I need you to stay and learn all the fun tricks that I'm going to show. And, you know, I just want you to have a really good time. And they're really going to have a lot of fun watching you run back and forth from side to side handing out these diva dollars. You're really a big part of the entertainment. They're here to see you, so I just want you to stay fully involved. So we want to keep those snacks super simple. So if we bring them in and we get them in the jewelry and we sit them down, that way those gals that have to leave early are in control of their time and they get to see the presentation and they can go. And those that want to linger over the food can do that. Does that make sense? So something simple, you know, something salty like maybe chips and dip and maybe something sweet like cookies or brownies for those of us that want to splurge. And then just some soda or some lemonade, okay? So keep it really, really simple. And if you make a big, you know, I don't want you spending money on food and then people don't come. So just keep it really simple. Make sense? Okay. All right. So now if you wanted to do a theme, we could do a theme too. Sometimes people like, you know, to do um, something with chocolate or, you know, a fiesta theme. We can do that too. And I can put it on the invite if you want. But just simple is the best. Okay. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to put the jewelry in here. We're going to do the presentation in here. All right, now let's sit down for a couple minutes, and I just want to go over how to have a really fabulous show. All right, so I brought you some extra catalogs, okay? Awesome, and we're going to talk about how you're going to use that in just a minute. And I brought you some order forms, okay? And, of course, I brought, um, I brought your watch or listen to win, but did you watch that? Now, my hostesses are going to receive... 
Okay, this is a little side note here. My hostesses are going to receive all this stuff when they book a show with me at the show because it's just paper. So I give it to them and I bring it again when I home hostess coach them. But they're all going to get the watch or listen to win paper. And they are um, reminded in an email before I come that they need to watch this video and fill this paper out. And we're going to go over this at the end. Okay, so I ask her about that if she's got that. And I've reminded her. And then um, I say, okay, and do you have your tic-tac-toe board? No, nope, don't worry about it. I've got one. Okay, so let's pull this out and let's just go over it. Now, this tic-tac-toe board is a way for you to earn extra prizes because prizes are always fun. Okay, so we're going to give away lots of prizes in the show, but, um, you know, I have that fun little prize bin. And I know, you know, you're going to want one because everybody's winning prizes and it's just fun. It's got sunglasses and jewelry cleaner and scarves and all sorts of things. So this is a way that you can earn a prize from there or two or you can get a clip it. Okay, so first of all, you've already got hold your show on the original date. Swoop, swoop. Okay, we're going to mark that off. That's awesome. Good job. Um, it's really great. And you know, that comes with a special from Premiere. If you get $100 in sales before the show and you keep your originally scheduled date, you're going to get a $50 bonus. Okay, it's awesome. So we're going to talk about pre-sales in just a second. All right, our next thing is 10 guests at the show. All right, so you invited about 30 people. Um, I've got your invite list, and that's awesome. Is there anybody that you want to just hand invites out to um, or email them to? I can no. Oh, some people at work? Okay, great. Yeah, so you know what? Um, if you want, you can just print those invites out and just hand them out at work. It's really so much better if you personally invite them and hand it to them. So let me give you some extra tickets, okay? So here's some extra tickets. And give them the ticket too because it really makes it sort of personal and fun and makes it seem more real. Don't just post an invite at work. Go ahead and hand them one because then they're they're going to feel more obligated to come and, and feel more important, you know, to you that you personally invited them. When you mass invite on Facebook or you mass invite on any social network media or at work, people can just ignore it. So we don't want them to ignore it. Now, by the way, when the next block is to personally invite everybody. So you've given me these 30 people. I want you to call them, text them, or see them in person, but I want you to let them know it's coming. I want you to tell them that they're going to get this cute little pink envelope with the zebra, and there's a ticket inside, and you have to sell it. You have to tell them why they should come. If you don't, they're not going to come, okay? So we're partners here, and I'm going to dazzle them with the jewelry and teach them fun, fun ways of things to do with their jewelry so that they can feel beautiful, but you're the only one that can get them here. So you need to come up with some reason that they should come other than buying the jewelry. So, oh my gosh, it's like a little educational seminar. She's going to teach you so many things. She's going to teach you about fashion. She's going to teach you how to dress. She's going to teach you how to do things with your jewelry you never knew. You're going to learn so much. You've got to come. Or... Oh my goodness, my daughter's in town. You're going to, you know, you got to come and see her. Or this is my new baby. You got to come give her a squeeze. Um, come see my house. I'm going to make my grandmother's famous chocolate chip cookies. I don't care. Just give them a reason to come that it's going to be fun and they're going to learn. And make sure they're here on time so that they can hear the presentation. That's really important. Now, make reminder calls. You are in charge of this. You can get this marked off on your tic-tac-toe board so that you can win prizes by making reminder calls. I am going to make you a little picture um, on red stamp, and I'm going to text it to you. And it is going to say, remember to be on time for the on-time drawing, bring your ticket, wear a solid colored shirt. We are going to have a blast. Come have some fun. And you can text that out as a reminder. You can email it out. You should call people. You want to see them in person, and you want to remind them that they are going to have a blast, and you are so excited for them to come. If you don't hear from them, if they don't RSVP, they're not coming, okay? So it's very, very rare that somebody surprises us and shows up that didn't RSVP. And I want you to know how many people are coming so that you, you know, can prepare appropriately. So make sure you're reminding people. And I know it's really embarrassing when you're like, um, hey, Sally, you haven't RSVP'd. Okay, because I am the queen of not RSVPing because our lives are swirling around so fast. So instead of doing that, all I want you to do is I want you to remind every person that said yes and every person that did not say no. So anybody you haven't heard from. Because most people, if you remind them and say, hey, 
I'm so excited to see you. Don't forget to be on time. And they're not coming. They're going to respond and tell you that they're not coming. So it's a great way to find out whether they're coming or not by just reminding them. Okay, the middle block is to have a $400 show. That is a gimme. Okay, having a $400 show should not be hard. The national average is, is about a $500. Okay, so now this is where you're going to insert and tell her your show average. If you don't know how to find your show average, you want to go on the main website, go to um, your activity report, the activity report on the lower left hand part of your homepage. Click it. Your little block will come up and it'll say how many shows that you've done. Click the number of shows for the year. Okay. Then another box is going to come up and it's going to show you each month how many shows you did and your show average. At the bottom is your average for the year. So if it's 550, 600, you say $400. We got this. You get a, um, some pre-sales and you um, get, you know, six to eight people. We've got this no problem. My show average is, and you say your show average. So $400 should be easy. You need to set a precedent for them so they have some type of goal. Women need to know, what should I expect? I mean, is it like, um, is it $1,000 a good show? Is $2,000 a good show? Is $200 a good show? Is $300 a good show? is they have no idea. So you need to teach them and tell them what a good goal is and how many people is a good number of people. Okay, that's why our goal is 10. Even though we don't have bonus for it anymore, we still can have bonus for it. All right, so our goal is always 10, but say, hey, you know, most of my shows are like seven to eight people, five to seven people. So anything above that's gonna be great. We wanna encourage her. But we also want her to have some sort of concept of what she's shooting for. All right, the next one is pre-sales, four to six orders. And that's where, you know, we point out our pre-sale order form. I take a couple minutes and talk to her about where we're going to get pre-sales. All right, so where do you think you're going to get pre-sales? Do you think you can get some at work? Oh, yeah, I think I'm just going to put the book out in the cafeteria at school, and I'm sure people will just order like crazy. <laughs> no. So you need to say, oh, that sounds great. You know what, though? I think what might be better is to do this. I want you to take the book, okay? And then I want you to take some post-it notes or some little index cards or pieces of paper. And I want you to look through it to make your wish list. And as you do, when you see something that you think would look really fabulous on a friend of yours, I want you to put a little post-it note on it right there with her name on it. Then the next day at work, I want you to go up to her and go, Cindy, oh my gosh, you know how I'm having that jewelry show? So I was making my wish list and I saw this. Ice crystals, that would look so great with that silver turtleneck of yours, don't you think? Okay, and she's gonna go like this. Oh my gosh, that's so cute, what is this? Oh, is this premiere? Oh my gosh, oh. And then you could say, yeah, you, are you gonna be able to make it to my show? Oh, I can't, I have a wedding that day. Well, do you wanna take the book until tomorrow and just look at it? There's a special, if you spend $75, you get 25% off your next item. Now she's looking, okay? So that's how you can show. You wanna mention it to people, and don't forget about the guys, okay? Because men at your work, they don't know what to buy, and so show them. Say, hey, I think your wife would love this. I can help you with this. You know, this is great. She's, you're gonna just make her day. She's gonna be amazed. So you just wanna show and talk to people individually. So you just need to take a couple minutes with your hostess and think through, if she's a stay-at-home mom, could she take it to her husband's work? Does she have far-off relatives? Now that we have our website online, that makes it a whole lot easier to get your pre-sales. So we want to say, do you have a sister in Wisconsin? Okay, well, can we show her this, this website? So you want to brainstorm with her. Now, um, I, I encourage her. I make another red stamp um, picture of my website and my code and I say I'm gonna send this to you and as people tell you no then you can send them this information but let's not get it out there before the show because we don't want them to just order and not come to the show and learn all the fun things that we're gonna learn okay the next block is um, getting a booking before the show so we talk about that you know people that can't come but I also let her guess so the night of the show, I say, take a guess of the people that are here, and if she books, I'll give you credit. And so she might say, well, my sister Sally, she books her everything. And if Sally books, then she gets that block. 
This helps me when I'm going to do my booking activity to start with Sally because she's my most likely target to also spend a little extra time talking to her and a checkout going, Sally. You know, if you decide to book, then not only will this help her to get the bonus of $50 in free jewelry, but will help her win her tic-tac-toe game. Okay, so that helps you to book. Meet with me about to hear about Premiere. Now this is the time where I'm gonna to talk to her a little bit about Premiere. So I say, okay, hey, did you watch my Watch or Listen to Win? You did? Great, give me the paper. Okay, now she's filled this paper out and this is a whole nother training, okay? But this paper is so important because it has all these answers to all these questions that are so great. All right, but I'm gonna immediately look down at scale to one to 10, what did she circle? What was her hesitation? Who did she put down that she could book a show with? And um, what was her reason? Okay, bing, bing, bing. These are the things I'm looking at. So if she's anything like a three or above, I'm really excited and I'm going to talk to her about it. Oh my gosh, you are a six. What made you a six and not a one? That is so exciting. I would love to hear. And she's going to tell me. And this is going to springboard me into an opportunity to talk to her about Premiere. Okay, so this is a great time, and, and I've got this time set aside to talk to her about it, and I'm going to ask her a couple questions, and she responds to me. We're going to start having a conversation, and you might just say, do you have enough time that I can keep going, or do we need to set up another time? But it's so vital, because if she's interested at all, I want this show to be her training show. I want to catch her early, so this is really important. Now, let's say she's a one, okay? Here's information for you. She, if she has filled out who to have a show with, hello, this is vital insider information for you when you have your show because with her, you can go right to mom and sister and Aunt Peggy and maybe they won't have shows with you. Maybe they would just have shows with her. But you never know. They are really likely candidates so we can focus on talking to them. So this is really great information. This is where you're going to go over this with her and even on the phone, um, if I have to talk to her on the phone or something like that, I'm going to ask her to text this to me ahead of time so I can look at it and then I'm prepared to talk to her about it. Okay, the last thing on the tic-tac-toe board is booking a show in six months and I'll even let her book a show within a year um, because I want to get her back on my calendar and she could be the third booking to get the bonus. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that typically we decide that night, but I have had women rebook right there when I'm coaching them too. So they're like, yeah, I wanna do this again. And they get on the book and so that they get credit for that. Okay, so then as soon as I'm done, I say, well, great, do you have any questions for me? And she might have some questions for me. This is a great time to answer them and make sure she's all set and ready to go. I say, well, great, you know what? Um, we'll talk again. I'm gonna get your invites out two weeks before your show and I'll text you and let you know that I did that. You want to be working on your pre-sales. Um, you want to be reminding everybody and getting them excited. Um, we're going to have a great time. We're going to learn lots. You're going to get tons of free jewelry. I'm super excited to help you. And um, I will see you again soon. And then I leave. That's it. Bing, bang, boom. Okay? So <clears throat> it's really vital. I've made a connection. I have helped her to understand and feel more comfortable with visualizing where the jewelry is going to be, visualizing the show already happening, visualizing her role, what she's going to be doing, really understanding what her goals are. Um, you know, she's shooting for 10 people. How is she going to do that? She's got to remind them. She's got to invite them. She's got to give them a reason for coming. She's going to keep her snacks simple. She's going to be participating in the show. She can already visualize it and imagine it. Now, uh, one other thing you can do, especially when the new line comes out, what I love to do when I home hostess coach people in January, is I bring some of the new pieces in one of those little fold-out um, containers and a little the thing we get on the incentive site, little zipper black thing. And I show her some of the pieces and that gets her really excited. And that's especially fun if I'm going to do this at work. And so the other lady is like, ooh, what are you doing? What is that? And it gets them excited. So you want to just enjoy it, have some fun and give it a try because it really will make you more confident and your business so much stronger. Good luck.